everyone, and welcome back to Nerdy Scores, a film podcast. I'm your host, Brian Stuffio, and this is episode 19. I am joined by my co-host, Matt Wilder. Hi. And today is November 22nd, 2015. Let's just jump right into the episode. There's only five news stories. The last one I'll probably go on forever about. And, um, yeah, here we go. So everyone knows that next year... A sequel to Blade Runner will begin filming. We have been in, we have gotten the news that Harrison Ford's coming back. We know that Denis Villeneuve directed it. Roger Deakins is shooting it, but we already have a new cast member attached, and this guy's been in talks for quite some time to be in this movie. We got Oscar nominee Ryan Gosling to be a part of this film. Uh, don't know who his role is going to be, but it's going to be incredible going seeing him going back and forth with Harrison Ford. I I really like Blade Runner a lot. I'm really looking forward to his sequel with Denis Villeneuve directing. I mean, triple hit Prisoner's Enemy, Sicario, triple hit, boom, boom, boom. And guys, awesome. Roger Deakins, fantastic. I'm so excited to see him shooting some sci-fi, gritty, dark elements to it. And I think that this movie's going to go well. But with Ryan Gosling joining it, I think he's a very good actor. I think he's proven that he's a very good actor. And... I think that he's a perfect choice for this, and I'm really excited to see him in this film because I think he's going to do one hell of a good job. <clears throat> I still have to finish watching the first Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should, probably should watch it before this comes out. But this sounds, like, really good. I'm guessing he's probably going to play, like, an android. Probably. I don't know, Matt. It would be a good guess. <laughs> No, that doesn't mean that he's going to automatically play an android. It's a good guess, though, I said. Your guesses are usually inaccurate. Yeah. So don't listen to me. <laughs> um, this sounds really good that they got Harrison Ford to come back, because he was in the original. Everyone knows that. That's a good move to hire the original cast member if he's still alive. <laughs> And then also getting Gosling, which gives really is a really good actor. I'll admit that. Even though you know a lot of people, are, a lot of the women love him for his looks. A lot of the men love him for his acting. And I'll tell you, he's, that's that's just a good choice. And <clears throat> hopefully it does good, because he's. I heard that Big Short's been doing really good, so it's a good choice. Yeah, a film by a director whose films you haven't even seen. No, but I'm just saying I know it's doing good. Don't look at reviews. It's not your job, but whatever. Next piece of news is that Oscar-winning actress Patricia Arquette is joining Toy Story 4. We don't know what character she's playing. Um, I love Patricia Arquette. I loved her in Boyhood. And um, I think I'm looking forward to this thing. What? What? What are you doing? You're like, are you rushing me? No. It's my show, bitch. I'm just like... Rubbing my feet, why? Well, you're making it... No, you weren't rubbing your feet. Your hand was away from your foot. You were, like, doing this, like, come on, come on, come on. You're, like, you're moving your hand in a circular fashion to the point where you're, like, going to rush me. <laughs> and that's not exactly what I want you to do during my show! Um, yeah. Um, I I really like the idea of how this movie's going to be, like, a romantic comedy. I think that's actually really brilliant. And, um... I'm very curious to see how this movie turns out, but I, I'm confident because of the hard work that's being put into this film. Like they wouldn't make a film just for the hell of it. They're making it because they did say that when Toy Story 3 ended, they were like, we're only going to make a Toy Story 4 if we have a story, and they must have a good story to make a film like this. But talking about Patricia Charquette, I think she's a very good actress. I am curious to see what she's going to play in this movie, and I'm really, really looking forward to this movie. And by the way, today is the 20th anniversary of Toy Story. Toy Story was released 20 years ago today. So, happy anniversary, Toy Story. Turns out it's just about, like, Andy's mother or something. <laughs> Boyhood, Toy Story Link, maybe, no. <laughs> kiss, kiss, kiss. Good question, though, who's she going to play? Because it's probably going to be a new character, most likely. And, as I know of... With all that, the, again, original cast is coming back, so we can assume that already. Now, they really did leave it open with Toy Story 3's ending, I would say. So, I mean, it's a good thing they're making another one, because, I mean, every one of them is freaking amazing. All of them. 
and I mean, like you said, they must have had a good story or something, because they, they're not just going to unnecessarily make sequels that don't make sense. And it is cool that they are doing a different type of genre for this. So, it, again, like, growing up, like, someone like Harry Potter, you, when you were kids, you know, how it progressed to become darker when you were teenagers. It's kind of like this with Toy Story, so that's pretty cool that they're doing that. And, um... When does it come out? Um, 2017? 2018. Can't wait for then. Next piece of news is that the Fury of Everything writer Anthony McCarran joins the Freddie Mercury biopic, which now has been entitled Bohemian Rhapsody. Nice. Um, with this whole biopic, I remember when they announced that Sasha Baron Cohen was going to be part of it, and I thought that was perfect, because not only is Sasha Baron Cohen actually a really good actor, he looks like Freddie Mercury. He's basically... His doppelganger. When he left the um, the project due to create differences with him and the remain members of Queen as well as Freddie Mercury's family, it just broke my heart. But right now, for the last like couple of I think like year and a half, Ben Wishaw, aka Q from um, Spectre and Skyfall, has been in talks to um, play him, and it's been their top choice. Now, just I just want to briefly talk about that. Like I. I like that guy. I just don't... I haven't seen much of him. I've only seen those two Bond films. He's going to be in The Danish Girl, which comes out next week. He was in Paddington, where he voiced a little tiny bear. And I don't know. I mean, he just doesn't fit the part, for me at least. For me at least. Um, I would like to see Sacha Baron Cohen be this role. Um, Now, with the writer, I really... I think the script for that movie was probably my favorite thing. I adored the script for The Fear of Everything, and I didn't love it as much as Matt did. I really, really, really liked it a lot, and um, I like it a lot. And, um, I mean, you know, it's a film that got A. Remy and his Oscar. Felicity Jones got nominated. It was the story of Stephen Hawking. It was a beautifully told film. And I think him writing this film, I think that's a great addition. I just really want to know who's going to direct it. That's all. I mean... If Ben Wishaw is going to be playing him, and I mean is going to be playing him, he's got to play the role very well. He's got, I mean, I, I look at him, I don't see Freddie Mercury. I look at Sacha Baron Cohen, I see Freddie Mercury. So, I don't know how this movie's going to turn out, but we'll just talk about this story alone with the writer. I think it's a great pick, and I'm really curious to see how he's going to write this film. <clears throat> and also, Queen is the shit. Long live Queen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Probably one of the greatest bands ever. <laughs> Up there. Now. Oh my God! Stop saying now. 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 <laughs> stop. <laughs> ben Wishaw is probably gonna like do some kind of transformative stuff. He probably will. He knows that he has a legacy to live up of, live up with Freddie Merc playing you know Freddie. So he's gotta he's gotta you know transform himself basically and. He's probably he's probably gonna do a good job. It just hopefully he doesn't overact. That's the one issue here, is that he could overact because he is such a young actor that he's so intimidated by the role that he'll overact it. But still, I mean, I hope he does a good job with that. And now the writer for Theory of Everything, that movie had probably some some of those realistic you know lines ever. That movie was a really solid script. That wasn't really like out of this world crazy, nothing over the top, always subtle, always, you know, realistic and never deviated from realism. And it also was very sad at some points, let's just say. So I hope he does a good job, especially with the tragic story of Freddie Mercury. That, I mean, if you know about it, it's pretty tragic. It's a really sad story, and I hope it does, this movie succeeds, because I'm, I'm interested in this. Next piece of news is that Christopher McQuarrie, the guy who just directed Mission Possible Rogue Nation, is currently in talks to direct MI6. Now, this kind of is a happy thing and a sad thing at the same time. Here's why it's happy. Because since MI5 is probably the best one in the franchise, he did a perfect job directing that film. And I just love the way he brought the realistic action vibe to it. It was also a very fun movie. That's a movie I still remember to this day. I always saw it. Uh, the day it came out, that was the only time I saw the movie, and I'm probably going to watch it again when it comes out on Blu-ray in like three weeks. Um, 
Now, the sad thing is, because every other film was directed by someone different, it's kind of sad that they're not going to do that anymore. I mean... I, I mean, right now it just says he's in talks, so I mean... It's probably true. Generally, whenever a lot of news reports say that someone's in talks, they're generally correct. So, but I think... I just kind of wanted it to be directed by someone different because I like how they have a different style each film. But I think it, it will work very well with this one because I think he did a really good job with MI5. I just kind of wish it was someone else directing it. That's all. That's what I'm saying. But this is... I'm very mixed about this news story. <clears throat> Now, maybe, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, he's dying right now. Every time I say that, I think the reason they probably switched to a different directors is remember it used to be like a very they they took like a long hiatus in movies mostly back then, and I think the reason why they're like sticking with McQuarrie is because I think. Tom Cruise has said, hey, we found our perfect director. Because McQuarrie, pretty damn close to perfect. He directed the MI5. Like, there was... All the action scenes were freaking great. There was no one moment where the movie felt dull. It was always fast. It had a good story. There was no shaky cam. Everything was just very, very good. So now... With the, uh, I think Stink Cruise is like, hey, we gotta, we gotta bring him back. He did a really good job. We gotta, you know, wrap up this story because possibly this could be maybe the last one. We don't know. We never know when the last one will be. And but he probably just wants the best director they got, which was McQuarrie. So, even though I understand why you're um, very saddened by it, because it is interesting when they brought like, they went from freaking J.J. Um, Abrams to like so many other people. As well as, you know, John Woo, which is probably one of the silliest of all of them, I might too. But I think, though, this is probably a really smart choice for director. And the final news. <sighs> you know... I... Okay. There's this company called AMBI, and um, they're a company that purchased the rights to a lot of films, including like Cruel Intentions, Die Darko, Memento, Rush, The Mexican. Oh. Um, so they announced to us film lovers. It, the the news that they said just broke my heart because they announced that they are remaking they're remaking Memento. Um. Okay. Um. Let me just start by saying, what the fuck is your problem by doing this? Are you serious right now? I understand from a business standpoint why they would remake this film. I understand that, but. It's a film that is critically beloved by a lot of film lovers all over the world. It was the film that got Christopher Nolan on the map. It Guy Pierce was so amazing here. The way the movie was put together was just something so different and so fascinating that it was a perfect film for film lovers. And I'm going to quote what the, um, the producer or president or whatever said about this. She said this and I quote, Memento is a masterpiece that leaves audiences guessing not just throughout the film, but long after as well, which is a testament to its daring approach. We intend to stay true to Christopher Nolan's vision and deliver a memorable movie that is every bit as edgy, iconic, and award-worthy as the original. It is a big responsibility to deliver something that lives up to the mastery of the original, but we are extremely excited and motivated to bring the puzzle back to life and back into the mind of moviegoers. Okay, listen. Oh, my God, my head. Um... Okay, here's the thing. If you're going to remake Memento, you can't really do exactly what the original did. you got to do something that maybe stays a little bit true, but also kind of changes it a little bit. Not changes it completely, but just... Just, okay, I just don't understand why they're remaking this film. There are so many films out there to remake that are so 
bad, but this film is so beloved by critics and audiences. I just don't understand why this has happened. And to be quite honest, this is actually my personal favorite Christopher Nolan film. I, excluding The Dark Knight, this is my personal favorite film that he's ever made. And I just don't understand that why they were me make something like this. And the quote is just complete bullshit. It's bullshit, the quote. So I don't know why the fuck they're remaking this film. It's honestly one of my favorites ever made. So it kind of pissed me off. Look, Point Break being remade, I think that's dumb. But honestly, Point Break, while a very fun movie, it's not exactly the best movie. This is a critically beloved film. So I don't understand why they would remake something like this. I understand if it was a foreign film where you translate it to American, I get that. But the fact that it's not... That's kind of saying something a little sad, so yeah, I'm really just, I'm really pissed off by this news, and AMB, AMBI, go fuck yourself, and the asshole, go bury yourself into some sand, and just kill yourself with a grenade. Damn. I heard, This is like the only news I heard about, I was really pissed off <laughs> when I heard this. Why would you remake a movie that has an extremely high critic score? What is your point other than money? And, and honestly, what are you going to do in this movie? It's already unique. What are you going to do? You can't make it go backwards again. You can't make it go forwards. That's because that's in its, you know, not original either. There's nothing you can really do in this movie. Unless, like, you had two characters, one going forwards, one going backwards. But that's still, that's not really the most original thing. There's nothing you can do. Unless you're going to have Christopher Nolan oversee this damn project, which you're probably not going to do. Because, you know, he's not an idiot. There's just You're just going to waste money. No one's going to see this. Because everyone knows, okay, there's a Christopher Nolan version that's way better. There's no excuse to remake it. There's no original idea. It's just... You can't do anything with Memento, okay? You can't do anything with it. It's, self, it's, move, it's a movie that's self-contained, basically. You cannot fuck around with it in any other fit version or else it'll suck. Really, I just don't know what they can do here. It's just a dumb idea. They really shouldn't remake this. Because it's just going to tarnish to Memento, the original. Or then again, could get more people fans. So, we'll see what happens in probably like three years when they do this shit. Well, that's it with the movie news. Oh, let's go to the trailers. We got one, two, three, four, five, eight trailers to go through. Let's start with the big one, Zoolander 2. Full disclosure, I adore Zoolander. I was really curious when they finally confirmed the sequel earlier this year, and I've been like, okay, I'm excited for it. We finally got a full trailer. I laughed my ass off during this trailer. I am so looking forward to this movie. I really hope that they didn't show every funny moment in the trailer. I really... Honestly, hope they didn't. So that is why I'm going to go into this movie with very, 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 very low expectations. Because I have no idea what I'm going to get. I don't. This could be like, um, I have to think of a comedy sequel that was so far ahead. That was so, like, I mean, Anchorman 2 was a good film. I think that there were a lot of good moments in that film, but there were some weak moments. Dumb and Dumber 2, I actually really enjoyed because I didn't go into that movie with, like, any expectation at all. So I know a lot of people really didn't like that film. I personally thought it was a fine film. Um, so I'm going to go into this film with low expectations. What I like about it, I mean, I, it's just awesome that Ben Stiller has come back to direct the film and come back as Zoo and their own Wilson is Hansel. That's amazing. I love the addition of Penelope Cruz, who is amazing to look at. Um, I love the celebrity cameos. There's one cameo that involves a man playing a he-she model named All. I'm not going to say who it is. If you've been spoiled it by, like, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Like, if you didn't watch the trailer and you know who that is, I feel so bad that you got spoiled that. I feel terrible. Absolutely terrible that you got spoiled that. There's one cameo of someone doing parkour, and then when the person dies, he does, like, this amazing face. Like, he gets shot, and then he, like, comes back to life for five seconds, and he just dies. I'm not going to say who it is, but it's someone that a lot of teenagers like that kind of already gave it away. But... And highlight of the trailer, we'll just say. That's the highlight of it. That kind of, I feel like I just gave away the person, even like... though I didn't say who the person was. Um, but, um, and then you got Will Ferrell come back as Mugatu. I mean, doing the iconic Todd, Todd, where's my goddamn latte? Ah! I'm the mama pajama! 
when he comes out, you think he's on steroids, and then he lifts off the fucking... Like, oh, my oh, my God! Oh, my God! I couldn't, I literally rolled on the floor when watching that fucking scene. Oh my god, I couldn't handle it. Oh. Because you think he's got like tattoos and like steroids and then oh. it's just like he rips it off. It's like, shh. Oh. God, but yeah, I am looking forward to this movie. I am. And another moment I'm going to talk about right now is when he, he's in the car with his son with the stuff he's making. And then his son's like, what the hell is your problem? Oh my god! I'm so bummed for this movie. I cannot wait, but yeah, I am going in with low expectations. But I'm just reviewing the trailer. I thought the trailer was pretty amazing. This movie does not look la may. <laughs> okay, I just watched Zoolander one last night. That movie is very. It's funny because of how zany and crazy it is, and it seems like with the sequel they're staying to that. <laughs> from everything, from the most im. You know, unimpronounced fucking words that are so simple to say. Like, instead of saying lame la may, to like, the crazy cameos. To just like, what? <laughs> okay, this movie looks funny. You already talked about everything in the trailer I was going to bring up. But, man, it's just such a good trailer. Because it, it shows so much funny stuff. It gets me interested. And it's got, like, some hooks. I mean, I know where you're going to go. Again, there's the one cameo, let's just say, where somebody dies, right? And that's probably going to get a lot of people to go see the movie just for that one scene. <laughs> and I would see it, too, just for that scene. Because it looks... This movie looks great. Because if I remember, wasn't the last movie uh, Wolf... Uh, not Wolf, I don't know. Uh, ben Stiller directed was Tropic Thunder, right? Last film he directed? Yeah. Walter Mitty. Oh, it was Walter Mitty. Which I didn't see, but I saw Tropic Thunder before that. Um, which he did a good job at Tropic Thunder, and then do you want to say anything about Walter Mitty? I think it was a too big of a film for him. I don't think that was his kind of film to direct, even though it was a passion project for him. So I don't... Th I think he I, did a good job, though. He did fine. Okay. But he did a great job with Tropic Thunder, Zoolander, Reality Bites. The Cable Guy's a pretty underrated and underappreciated film. Oh, Billy! Like, it's a pretty underrated and underappreciated film. But yeah, uh, he's a very good director. Uh, I remember the days in Happy Gilmore when he had that macho mustache. <laughs> yep. The only scene, in my opinion, that I love from Happy, uh, Happy Granny. Gilmore. <laughs> my fingers hurt. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, this movie looks really good. And I like that then they're keeping up with the times, making it look like they're old now. Even though they're really not that old. Um. So, yeah. I am looking very forward to it. Especially, remember that one scene where they were, he was trying to be like, hey, remember what you did at the end of the movie, of the first movie? Can you do it again right now? Just start throwing shit at him. Yep. <laughs> it was fucking great. This, this, tra I say, this trailer is probably is up there with the best trailers this week. I'll guarantee that. I can't wait for this movie in like a couple months. Deadpool has competition. It yeah. has competition. It does. Yet. Actually, February's actually got competition. No, but finally. I'm saying this comes out the same day as Deadpool. Oh, shit. So. This looks like February That's good count programming. Looks really good this year. They look, I'm sorry, they look really good. Next trailer is The Huntsman Winter's War. This is the sequel to Snow White and the Huntsman. Chris Hemsworth and Charlize Ferrara come back, and they are joined by two amazingly, amazingly gorgeous women. Emily Blunt and Jessica Chastain, my babe. Oh, um, um, I thought Snow White Huntsman was an okay film. I think that Charlize Theron was terrific in the film. And my God, she is a beautiful woman. She is gorgeous. I think Chris Hemsworth did very good. And Chris Hemsworth was fine. She, she did okay. She wasn't that terrible in it. Um, I didn't watch the entire trailer for this because I feel like I was going to be spoiled more. So I only watched like the first like 55 seconds of it. I don't really remember it, which is actually a good sign. All I remember is that Jessica Chastain and Chris Hemsworth kiss. Chris Hemsworth, I will come and find you and I will kill you. I swear to God. Damn. I'm, I'm kidding. You're Thor. You're going to kill me with Damn. your hammer. And I should probably run away now. Thank you. Have a good day. Um, But I, from what I saw, I was like, looks fine. Um, I'm curious to see how this movie's going to turn out. Um, I remember Frank Darabont was originally supposed to direct it, but he's just a writer and producer behind it. I actually would have loved to have seen him direct this film. But, um, 
Overall, <laughs> the trailer is fine, and uh, for what I saw, and I'm curious about the movie. So this is another movie where I'm gonna go with like not much expectations. I saw the first Snow White, and I actually enjoyed it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. It was, I, you know, it was fun. I, I think it's probably one of the better live action movies I've seen. I didn't see Cinderella, mind you, right now. So, this isn't based on Disney. And. Well, still, I'm just bringing up live action adaptations because it still does count. Of princesses. Yes. But this <laughs> is not Disney. I remember you asking me, you're like, isn't this Disney? No, it's not Disney. No, but I'm saying, because if anyone gets it confused, and I'm thinking, wait, you're dissing on Cinderella? I'm like, I didn't see Cinderella. All right? Because, you, you know. heartless bastard. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. No, no, no. no. Watch it. Well, are you going to buy it every time? Why would I buy Cinderella? Just curious. Uh, now, this looks a little bit better than the move, the first movie. I mean, we haven't seen much still. I mean, there's there's a couple scenes. We we don't really get like a great understanding of the Huntsman yet because there's only like a. It focuses more on like Emily Blunt and Charlize Theron, I would say, and. I mean, I hope, I hope well, it turns her. out that um, to Emily Blunt, the cold never bothered her anyway. Ha ha ha! So um, oh, shit. so she needs to let it go. You have to say that again because the mic unplugged. The mic unplugged. Yeah. No, it's it's. Oh, it came from the computer. Ah. Yeah, it's okay. fine. So she needs to let it go. If only Nathan was here, then he could say it. Jeez, um, she could take a chill. Jeez, man. A real ice queen. Mm. Mm -hmm. I just burned my tongue. Mm -hmm. That's a quote mm -hmm. from Anchorman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, she's gonna give him the cold shoulder. <laughs> no, fuck it. We're, we have to stop doing these puns. We're getting terrible. We're gonna lose our subscribers. God damn. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh man. Um, but I'm still excited for this movie. I want to see more, though. Especially the whole relationship between Charlize Theron and Emily Blunt. I'm not gonna say that to you because you didn't watch the rest of the trailer but no. it's interesting actually it's... i really don't want to know really I... anything it about is interesting it. though that if i'm like forced to see this trailer during like um i have to think of what the next like big um type of movie like this what i think i saw this like it... on thursday so i didn't see it didn't play really? during hunger games for yeah. me we go to different feeders i yeah. go to amc you go to um cinemarks so it's a little different with amc and cinemarks matt yeah, no, but... No, but, like, no, I didn't see this trailer uh, uh, during anything, and if I do see it, I'll pro it will probably play during, like, I don't know, Fit the Frankenstein, probably, or it won't play during Creed. This is not really a trailer they would play during Creed, even though they played the Zoolander 2 trailer during The Hunger Games. Yeah, they did that, too, for us. So, um, I mean, uh, this trailer will probably come up at Krampus, maybe. They're yeah. both Universal films, so that's probably... Happening, but yeah, that's it with that's it with the Huntsman Winter's War. Wish that movie's only a couple weeks away. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're not done? No, I was just gonna say I can't wait to go. See I, th this. I thought you I thought you were done. No, I was about, I was gonna say like let's just say basically there's two villains. I'm not gonna say, but you probably guessed. So. What are you talking about? In the movie, there's gonna be two villains most likely. Oh, cool. Good for them. Give me the so, mic. So it's a step up. Just kidding. cool. Give really. give me the yeah, mic. All right. Give me the mic. Okay. Okay. Geez. Okay. God. Don't hurt me. God. <laughs> you peasant. Next trailer. Now you see me too. Now now. Oh crap. <laughs> um, I did see the first one. I it was actually one of my first reviews on this channel, and that review can go suck yeah. itself in the ass. Um, I, I I hate my watching my older older reviews. I just hate hearing I, myself. I hate no, I hate it so much. I hate it so badly. Um, but the film was eh. It was kind of a letdown for me because of its big talented cast. Everyone's pretty much come back for this. I Isla Fisher is not because she was pregnant, so she didn't. She couldn't. She couldn't come back for this film, which is not a bad thing. They didn't, like, replace her character with a different actress. Like, like the actress that is replacing her is not the same character. It's just a different character, and that's Lizzie Kaplan. So, yeah, we got Jesse Eisenberg, Woody Harrelson, Mark Ruffalo, Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine, Dave Franco. They're all coming back for this film. And, um, overall, this was, like, a one-minute trailer. Exactly one minute, and I thought it was a pretty nicely edited trailer with really good visuals. There were a few shots in this movie that I was really impressed by. 
the one that I was impressed with the most was particularly where Jesse Eisberg's character, like, falls back, and then all of a sudden he disappears in the puddles. I'm like, that's actually really well done. And I'm curious about it. But then, after the title comes up, you hear someone saying, so happy to join you. And it's not other than Mr. Dana Radcliffe. Harry Potter! <laughs> you fucking killed my joke. <laughs> you asshole. God damn it, I want to choke you so badly. I want to choke you so badly. Imagine you're going to choke him. Just, ah, fuck. <laughs> we have evidence. Yes. And I think this might get people to go see the movie now because they're like, oh, he's playing a wizard. And then and then when I was watching the turn, I'm like, oh, you're a wizard, Harry. You're a fucking wizard. With the card mistake that he made. Like, if you've seen the trailer, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think it's awesome that he's actually a part of this movie playing Michael Caine's son. I think that's actually really brilliant. And it looks like that he's going to have a really fun time with this movie. And I think that the movie looks fun, but I'm going in with low expectation with this. Because, like I said, the first one was just, eh. They didn't need to make a sequel. I thought the twist at the end was kind of disappointing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as compelling as it should have been. Matt didn't see the movie, so he doesn't I did. Know. Yeah, I did. What the fuck? A while ago. My... What the fuck? I saw it on Netflix. <laughs> it's not on Netflix. It was when it was on Netflix. It was never on Netflix. Yes, it was. I don't think it was on Netflix. Yes, it was. You're thinking of HBO. It was on Netflix. You're thinking of HBO. It was on Netflix when it first came out. What do you? That's the disc thing, you idiot. Not yes, the watched, on the app. I watched itself. it on disc. Yeah. Yeah, on disc. That doesn't count as Netflix. Every movie like that's on on Netflix, but what's actually on Netflix is not that. So you're wrong about that. You're wrong. I'm right. I win. You We're lose. We're both wrong and right. Just no, you're right. not. <laughs> no, you're not. We gotta fight over like this now. <laughs> and I always win. I'm the winner. Unless Nathan's you're the, here, then. You're the loser. Fuck. We both lose. <laughs> Go, shut up. That's it for my thoughts on Now You See Me Chew Trailer. The end. Goodbye. <sighs> Who's it? I thought the first movie was fine. It was fine. Same thoughts as me. Sarasite! I mean, <sighs> I don't think it was terrible. No, I had... It was a Did I say it was terrible? No. It's a fun movie, all right? Nah. It's a fun movie. Eh. It's a fun I've movie. I've seen better. It's a fun movie. Okay! We keep nailing it to his head. Uh, now. Ah! Now. All we're missing in this movie is John Cena. <laughs> oh my god, enough with the John Cena memes. Everyone makes the memes now, too. That's because it's so easy to make. Stop yeah. doing that. Let's see. It's getting tiring. <laughs> The champ is here. Just yeah. doubt. Just do the dab. <laughs> Ugh. But this actually looks better than the first one. I'll admit that. As in, you have a bigger, more expanded cast with Daniel Radcliffe coming back, coming in for this movie. I must said back. <laughs> he went back to Hogwarts, kids. Um. He went back to Hogwarts. He went back to school where people thought he was cool. He gotta get back to Hogwarts. Hogwarts. He thinks he's going back. Man, never watched the very Potter musical. No. You Potter. Ugh. Hmm. Wait, you're anti Potter boy. Shut up. That is watch a great. That is seven. great. What? That's not just. It. No, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you gotta watch a very Potter musical and a very Potter sequel. I didn't even know there was a musical. What are you talking about? Everyone knew that. I never knew that. You butthead. Continue. Movie, dude, we need to see more. Obviously, it's only a minute. Um, yes, Matt. They, it's called. That's why it's called the teaser. Yes. And what's coming out next year? Yes. Well, Matt, they wouldn't make a trailer for a movie that's coming out in 2018. I'm interested in seeing this, definitely, especially with George Jesse Eisenberg's short ass hair. Oh God. Damn that short hair. Because he went to do this immediately after he finished Batman v Superman. That short hair. <laughs> Let it. him have his short hair. Mm -hmm. Let the man do what he wants to do. Now, I wonder, though, how they're going to do Morgan Freeman's character in this movie, just for, like, reasons. I'm not going to say what happened at the end of the first movie for anyone who cares about that. I'm not going to do that and other stuff. So, I hope it's good. I hope it is good. I hope it's better than the first, which kind of looks like it is, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Next trailer, the boss with Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Bell. Girl Scouts. No. This trailer, this trailer is so, so, 
It's garbage. I hated this trailer. I thought this trailer sucked. I love Melissa McCarthy, and it's weird seeing her very skinny. But why? Uh, first of all, my main question is, why is she wearing these long turtlenecks? Could she maybe not? I don't want to be mean, and I hate that I have to compare this. She looks like someone who just got their throat taken out. I don't want to be mean, but really, she shouldn't. Uh, don't wear turtlenecks. Take off the turtleneck and show off your skinnies because she looks really skinny. And she looks good. She looks really good. Kristen Bell. I love Kristen Bell. I think she's adorable. I think she's very pretty. I think she's very talented. I remember when they announced that she was going to actually know. I didn't know she was in Frozen until like a week before the movie came out. So I'm like, wait a minute. Since when does Kristen Bell say? Then when I saw them, I'm like, all right, Disney. Damn you, Disney. You did good. You did good, Disney. Um, But, um... I really think this is a bad trailer. The movie could be really entertaining. But the sad thing is, it's directed by Ben Falcone, who is Melissa McCarthy's husband. He appears in, like, everything. If you remember, Matt, he played Air Marshal John in um, Bridesmaids. Yes. So, I mean, like, that's that's awesome and everything. But, like, he directed Tammy, which could go... Oh, God, um, Which no. could go suck itself. Um... Uh. Paper bag. Oh, Matt, shut up. You never even saw the film. I regret to see it ever. You never even saw it. Shut up! Um, but yeah, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, pass, skip. I hope Matt didn't, like, just hate this trope because of what I said. I really hope he didn't. I want us to have different opinions. We must have different opinions every once in a while. I actually didn't hate this trailer. Okay, there we go. Different opinion. I like that. Okay, I don't give a shit about where the fuck she dresses, first of all. But it's distracting. It doesn't bother me. I just know It bothers me. Her hair is more The long turtlenecks are really aggravating. I'm sorry, but her hair is more distracting. You're more distracting. Ah! I'm just kidding. I just think that's kind of funny how they're using, like, kind of like Girl Scouts for this shit. It's just interesting. They're not, not a lot of movies do that. I.e. Dodgeball and other movies. Oh boy, you and Dodgeball. One of my favorite comedies. Yes. <laughs> now, do I think it'll be good? I don't know. Do I think it'll be bad? I don't know. All I know is that hopefully it's just mediocre. B based on what, you know, what Brian said. I, I don't know if this movie will be great or good but, or even mediocre, but we have to see what happens with it. I mean, it's got an interesting premise. It's something that we don't see a lot. So hopefully it does good. Next trailer, Central Intelligence starring Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart. I remember hearing about this movie quite some time. There was a funny video on Instagram where um he where those two record videos separately and they're like, Get the fuck out of my video! It was actually really entertaining. I actually really like the premise of this movie because Dwayne Johnson plays this hardcore CIA agent and he was like the dorkiest kid in high school and Kevin Hart plays his like um tech jock. Uh, <laughs> jockey tech guy and yeah he was the most popular guy in school and now Dwayne Johnson is like this hardcore CIA agent, which I just said. I actually think this movie looks pretty funny. I actually am looking forward to this movie. I was very surprised by this trailer. And um, I think it looks pretty entertaining. There's something that happens at the end of the trailer. I'm not going to say what happens. but um, It's horrifying. <laughs> don't interrupt me. Yeah. Until it's your turn. Fine. You idiot. I, to I told you this like, what? Like, what is this? Episode 18? I told you this like six weeks in a row. Stop interrupting me! Um... But I think this movie looks pretty entertaining. And it's from the guy who made Where the Motors, a film that I actually really enjoy. Um, but yeah, I am very interested in this movie, and I think it looks like a lot of fun. Well, Kevin Hart might be in probably his greatest movie, <laughs> as we've seen from trailers or movies he's come out with. Now, this movie actually looks good. <laughs> That's right. That's right, I said that. <laughs> and, I, and I just noticed, because, you know, I think, was it last week or the week before with uh, Brothers Grimsby and now this? They seem like they want to do, like, a CIA brother comedy movies, something like that. They're not brothers. Well, I'm just saying, like, 
they're trying to do like okay, you have the silly one, then you have like the hardcore motherfucker like type of person. And this, this I like some of the things, especially the last shot in the trailer was fucking horrifying <laughs> in a comedic way. Not gonna spoil it, but goddamn, it is horrifying. <laughs> There's some funny jokes, and I like how, even though he's a hardcore agent, The Rock is, is still, like, a very likable guy, like usual. He, he's, like, he's, like, the way he's talking to him is, like, he, again, he is his friend in the movie, but he's, like, his friend, basically. He's talking, even though he's a CIA agent, and he's, like, yo, you should come with me, like, type stuff. And it's, like, wow, that that's interesting for a hardcore CIA agent to act like that. So... The premise is really cool. I love. I, I really like where the Millers. Even though I don't know it, I just really like that movie to watch when it's on TV. It's it's got some funny jokes. So I hope it does good because I want to see Kevin Hart be in a really good movie. Uh, plus, so there's the guy who liked Ryan on. See, Ryan hates me now. You like a lot of shitty movies, that and then Matt's like, huh. That is why I am unique. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Next trailer. Midnight Special. This is the new film for Jeff Nichols. He's the guy who's ready to take shelter in May. That stars Michael Shannon, George Orgerton, Kristen Stunts, Adam Driver, Sam Shepard, and the kid from St. Vincent. I love this trailer. I'm really excited to see this movie. I've been actually, originally this movie was supposed to come out this upcoming Wednesday. But it got pushed back to March because of the whole busy movie schedule, because the whole crowd movie schedule. So it's coming out the same day as um, Elysian. And I hope this movie cra beats that movie, which it won't. It, it's not gonna do that. Um, but I think it looks. I think it looks excellent. I don't want to see any more footage. This was a perfect trailer. I don't even know what it's about. I just hope it doesn't end up like a Tomorrowland where they don't tell us what the movie's about, but then the whole movie turns out to be some convoluted movie. But I don't think it's gonna be like that with Jeff Nichols. And this is a studio film for him, and it has like a. It has a lot of, like, Kubrick, Spielberg types to it, Carpenter. Like, it looks like a movie that would be, like, from the late 70s, early 80s, and those are the kind of sci-fi films I love. I really, th and it also has a little bit of a Looper vibe to it, too. And I really think that it looks amazing. This is actually my personal favorite trailer the entire week, and I'm really looking forward to this movie. It comes out, um... Six days after I turn 18, so this is actually going to be a good week for me. I'm really excited to see this film. Really excited. And now we're going to hear thoughts from someone who has not seen a Jeff Nichols film. No. Plus, you're getting has some, some, some little pinches of J.J. Abrams in there. Okay, Matt. Hmm. Okay, so I guess this movie is about, like, the origin of Cyclops. <laughs> From the X Men? No, I'm just. Kidding. Um, this movie looks. I mean, it's strange. I'll give it that. Oh, Matt, you're the king of strange. How could you say a movie is strange when yet strange is strange basically? Strange is good. Strange is good. Oh, Matt. Like from the name of it to like all the shit going down, this looks very interesting. Especially why would they call it Midnight Special? Hmm. Unless. And I can probably think of a good opinion that maybe they're trying to, like, do one of those 1960s. Go ahead, finish. Wait. Finish your sentence, then let me say what I have to say. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Like, I like how they're trying to do, like, the whole 1960s Twilight Zone. It seems like it's, like, a Twilight Zone, like, movie. And, like, where it's very eerie. And, again, like, you brought up Carpenter. It's a very eerie, silent movie. Yes. Like... Especially with the name of it, I'm thinking, well, is this going to be, like, trying to, like, represent, like, one of those, like, late night episodes on, like, a horror, like, Twilight Zone, as I said. So, I mean, it, it looks interesting, I'll give it that. It looks beautiful, the movie. The cinematography looks really good. And, probably got, you got Zod, <laughs> you got a bunch of other people in the movie. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of other people, full disclosure, Jeff Nichols said this in an interview. Don't worry, guys. Adam Driver's playing a good guy because this is the first film he's doing after Star Wars, so you won't have to worry about him playing a bad guy in this movie. Turns out he's Kylo Ren when he was, like, a regular person. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, see right here. Here's a, here's a statement that he said. 
He said this. He describes the film as a sci-fi chase film. He said, however absurd that sounds, it's more grounded than mud. I really wanted to make a 1980s John Carpenter film like Starman. I love the way those films look. So that's actually a perfect statement yeah. to define how this movie is going to turn out. And I think this movie is going to be amazing. I do. I do. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. I mean, I like John Carpenter stuff. So, yeah. Watch Mud. Yeah, or Take Shelter. Because I see, because I was like, with my John Carpenter experience, I've watched maybe like. Yes, Matt, everybody films. has watched a John Carpenter. A John Carpenter film. I.e. The Thing, probably everyone's watched. At least. Uh, Halloween, Hello. Mm -hmm. Halloween. Plus, Assault on Precinct 13, the original. Uh, there's Ghosts of Mars, which I find that to be a fun movie, even though it's a really bad movie. <laughs> it's really bad, but it's um, fun. And then a little movie called Big Trouble in Little China. Yep, with Kurt Russell. Too bad he now. now we get to two trailers, which in my opinion are terrible, but I, n n they're worse than the boss trailers, personally. Gods of Egypt. This trailer sucks. This movie looks terrible. It looks like 300 Part 6. Like, okay, he looks exactly like the way he looks as Leonidas. Do you have 300? Yeah, it's somewhere. Hold on, I, wanna, I just want to look at like a picture. It should be somewhere. And I'll look for it, but as I'll talk as I'm looking for it. Um, okay. Let's just say this right now. The fact that... Oh, yeah, there it is. I found it. The fact that he... Gerard Butler looks exactly, exactly like Leonidas. He just has a shorter beard. Just... No. It's really? Li he literally... Looks. I think it's shorter, the beard, a bit. But... Oh, he's like in a mask. What the fuck? No, look at the mask. It's like, yeah, it is the exact same. No, Shit. it's literally the exact Look, same facial right there. hair. It's literally the exact same. It's like up on the same level. It pisses me off. But overall, this movie has terrible visuals, terrible writing. I haven't seen the movie, but the movie just looks gar. It looks like garbage. It looks <laughs> terrible. Yeah, and it just... No, I hate this. I hope this movie bombs. It, 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 really, it really looks terrible. It looks like a ripoff of 300 Meeks Exodus. No. It literally looks like those two. Don't interrupt me! Ugh. I'm serious. It really looks like those two films combined. And it really looks terrible. I am not looking forward to this movie at all. If I hear any slight positive thing, maybe I'll check it out. It looks like it also has some re reminiscence of Legend of Hercules, which sucks. So yeah, that is it for my thoughts on Gods of Egypt. It looks terrible. Not looking forward to it. I mean, when you have Gerard Butler and Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones going up against each other, yeah, that may seem exciting, but it ends. It turns out it's going to be something that's really mediocre and trash. So, yeah, that is it for my thoughts. Matt, worry about the stuff later. I'm fixing this. <laughs> Sit down! It's like... Oh. It, it looks like I Frankenstein and 300 had a baby. Because these visuals look like I'm Frankenstein, okay? Like, doesn't that... Am I the only one that thinks that? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I just... I don't, I don't care, okay? I don't care about this movie. Even though it's interesting how it's got set and... I don't even know who the other gods are. I only know it's set. Because, you know, set. <laughs> yes... I was gonna think, well, maybe, maybe the um, thing is Osiris, but I'm like, then again, he, they never say Osiris in the trailer, so I'm like, fuck. <laughs> uh, even though he's trying to pull like a Snake Plissken, which is interesting, but I, I just don't care. Unless I hear good shit, I ain't touching this movie. With the ten foot pole. And finally. We get to the trailer that wanted me, that made me like honestly. I almost jumped off my roof when I saw it. What? I, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I didn't do that stuff. Don't worry about that. Jesus. Um, this trailer is called Fifty Shades of Black. I'm not kidding. There's a movie called Fifty Shades of Black. No talking, Matt. Please. This is a parody, as you can tell, of Fifty Shades of Grey. Um. Will there ever be a time where these parody movies just go in? I like I mean this trailer is this is garbage 
I can understand where someone's like, oh, Gods of Egypt looks like one of those guilty pleasure type movies saying go for the boss. This movie just looks awful. I hate what Marlon... I like Marlon Wayans. I like him a lot. I just don't like what he's doing with these parody movies. I hated the Haunted House films. And scary movie movies start off well, but then they just went to, like, to the hell. This just looks like a whole new low. And listen, I didn't care for Fifty Shades of Grey. When I I do want to rewatch it again to see if I would hate it more, or if maybe I would like it slightly a bit more. Because I'm hearing it's better when you just watch it on cable, and I'm sure it is. Play soap opera. <laughs> Shut up! Not your turn. But um, the racism, the 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 stuff. The roots, the freaking twelve years of slave, Django, freaking whips. God damn it! What did I tell you <laughs> about interruption? You got strike one. Yeah, I hated this trailer. I just fuck you. Hold on, let me place the mic down so I could do this, and hopefully it doesn't knock anything over. That is the fuck you. Arm motion thingy majiggy. So, yeah, I hate it. Bam. <laughs> if the light's not on, that means the mic is off. I know. I'm just telling you. I know. I'm paying attention. I've done it a couple times already and had to put it back in. <laughs> oh, God. I want to like it, but I also want to hate this movie. <laughs> Why do you want to hate it? Yeah, because it has the terrible dialogue from. No, you're worried. You're worried that if you don't hate it, then people are going to hate on you. No, I just thought you were going to go like, "My God, Matt, why do you like this?" That's why. Well, I mean, I I, 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 I wouldn't understand if someone right. liked it. I wouldn't. I like it because it makes fun of a fucking bad movie already. That's the other issue. Yeah. This is way too soon. The movie just came out. Wait, to... what month is it? We're in November. The movie came out in February. That yeah. is... That's nine months ago. Nine months ago. So the film came out nine months ago. And they're making a movie that comes out in January. So, I mean... I, I mean, it doesn't cost much to make these movies. I get that. They probably put nothing into them. So there's no point. Unless, like... There is no point. I just thought maybe they're... If they want to make a parody movie, can you wait maybe like a good way for like four or five years? Don't make it like immediately after the movie comes out. They're probably trying to like follow each movie. So that's what they're probably... Oh doing. God, that's even worse. Yeah. So then when the sequels come out, they're going to make Fifty Shades of Blacker and then Fifty Shades of Blackish. Blackish. <laughs> oh. It just puts Lawrence Fishburne and Anthony um, Anderson from the show. I didn't say Blackish. I said Blacker. Yeah. Oh, she's oh, the black ish. Yeah, the no, black, <laughs> black ish. Black. Yeah. E S T. <laughs> no, that'd be funny if it's just oh, like Fifty Shades of Black Ish. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. I find it like the one of the few shots I find really funny was when, like, there were he was walking in the room and there was all the whips and it just said roots <laughs> like Twelve Years a Slave, Django Unchained. <laughs> I was like, that's so racist. Oh my god, it's not even funny. No, it's just funny because of how... There are sometimes, there are certain points in movies where there are some racist jokes that are used very well for comedy, but this is just used for the hell of it. It's and more it does not work. It's, it's forced. It's more offending. Like It's forced. Yeah. That's the word. It's forced. Like me when I say racist jokes. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I wanna, I'm just going to watch it because I want to see how ridiculous this movie is. Don't suffer. Don't pay money towards this. I haven't Let put, it bomb. I haven't put myself in the... Let it bomb. Fine, I'll take Brian's advice. I'll let it bomb. Or watch says. it online. Yeah, we might be breaking the law, but that doesn't mean anything. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Great song. Bye. Arrested for conspiracy of piracy. Judas Priest. Peace. Now we're going to get like arrested for conspiracy to do piracy now. He just wants the bathroom. So with that being said, we are going to take a break, and then we're going to come back to the Blu-ray releases and the movie releases. He had to clean his hands because of that movie. Yes. So we will see you guys in like a uh, few minutes, like literally like five seconds. So um, yeah, commercial break ending in five, four, three, two, 
one. Throw your main Peace. We are back from our commercial break. So let's get to the Blu-ray releases. Should we we got up, two Blu-ray releases. What? Should we bring up what, ha what happened? No. You sure? No. Right. Don't worry. It wasn't anything sexual. There was some crazy shit that happened. So, um... <coughs> He's currently coughing because of reasons, let's just say. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't seen any of these Blu-ray releases. Matt saw one of them. So, yeah, let's get right to it. The Man from Uncle, I didn't see this film. I wasn't really that interested in it. I was slightly interested in it, but then I'm like, oh, I'll wait for it. Um, um. <laughs> Andrew just texted you and said you're done with Jessica Jones. And, um, um, <clears throat> I, um, I'll check it out when it comes out on cable for show. And, um, yeah, uh,. Yeah, it's at the end. Now remember, Matt, you gotta say if you like it or not. Then you gotta say to tell the people who haven't seen it to buy it, rent, or skip. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually liked it. Um, it's it's again because I'm a I like Bond. That's why probably why I enjoy this because it because Solo um let's just say Henry Cavill's character. Is pretty much freaking Bond. <laughs> He's basically Bond. Yeah. Well, the uh, well, um, Army Hammer is more get like a typical Russian badass spy. And this movie is more of like I would say somewhat of a love letter to spy to old like you know sixty spy movies. So I, I enjoyed it. It was a fun movie. I would say. For wait, your grade. Well. If I remember at the time, didn't I give it a... I don't remember what you gave your movie. You gotta, like... Ah. Did I give it a B? I don't remember. I you should remember these things. I think I gave it a B or B. You should write down the grades you give for movies. I think I gave it a B or B plus, I think, at the time. But I would say definitely rent it. It's a fun time, especially if you like 1960 spy movies. It's a really good time, because it's basically that in this year's age with a nice stylized Guy Ritchie direction. So buy, rent, or skip? I said uh, rent. Okay. Definitely rent it, though. Okay. And the last rule release is, we are your friends! Didn't see this film. We are um, not your friends. Thank you very much. <laughs> once again, took the joke I was about to say, fucker. Um, I'll check this out when it comes on cable. Sorry, Zach. Then your movie bombed. I don't care about these. <laughs> terrible, terrible impression. <laughs> I just don't really care about this at all. It's a music video. Watch it on YouTube. <laughs> there you go. Just don't even, just watch on cable if you're interested. I don't care. Now let's get to the movie releases. Three wide releases, two limited releases, and I'm going to talk about Spotlight. God damn it! Text messages! Damn you and... Oh my god. Alright, alright. Tell him recording. <gasps> okay. Um, yes. Shut up. And I'm going to have my review of Spotlight. Spotlight. <laughs> Shut up, Matt. You're making me fuck up my words. Let's work our way from the bottom and work our way to the top. Uh, Alright, I'm going to fucking explode. Shut up! <sighs> Give me a second, people. Alright. If there's one more interruption, I'm going to end this show abruptly. Alright, Secret in Their Eyes. I didn't see this film. I wanted to originally, because I was slightly interested from the trailers, but because of the very not-so-good reception for this film, I decided I'm going to skip it. Um, so I can't say if it's worth seeing or not. I actually want to, like, I think about it. which Because I, I remember I heard of the movie that was based on The Secret in Their Eyes, but i never seen it, but now I actually want to see if I can find that. There's, like, an Argentine... 
Argentinian one. It's basically the same thing. It's just like in Spanish, the name of it. And it's a it's a very, you know, beloved foreign film. So I might want to watch it if I can find it. Because I've heard it's a really good film. So the night before, I saw this. Matt didn't. Um... Now, going into this movie, I was very much looking forward to it because I love these three actors. I love just Gordon Levitt, Seth Rogen, and Anthony Mackie. It's directed by John Van Levine, who directed Rogen and Gordon Levitt in 50-50, which is an amazing film that Matt finally saw, finally saw for the first time last week. Um, And I was like, I love R-rated Christmas comedies, and also it's a Christmas movie. I love watching Christmas movies. There's Christmas music. There's Christmas music now playing on the radio, I and usually that. I would think they would start playing that on the night of Thanksgiving. Not now, but okay, whatever. Um, so I was looking forward to this movie, and I gotta tell you, overall, I thought it was a really enjoyable, fun, heartfelt film, and I actually kind of, I actually kind of loved it. I thought it was a really good movie and i thought it was entertaining i thought it was very heartfelt um it's all right positive when you have good comedy like this and it works very well with all the stoner stoner stuff and the pop culture stuff it actually works very well i actually really like the premise of how joe score and levitt seth rogan and anti mackie are these childhood friends and every christmas eve they would go out and just party and stuff, and now this is the last time they're going to do it, because Seth Rogen's going to become a father, Anthony Mackie's a famous person, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt just, he wants to continue doing it, but he's not really, kind. Of, he's kind of like the immature one, he's kind of like a Seth Rogen type of character, and yet Seth Rogen's playing the kind of straight guy in this. Um, So I really liked the comedy in this movie, there were a lot of funny scenes, there's one particular role in the movie that's kind of a cameo, but really isn't, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who doesn't know about it, but man, oh man, Man, oh man, uh, it really is an amazing. It's a guy playing a stoner that um, is friends with these three guys, and it's just amazing. It's honestly fantastic. You would never see a guy like this actor play a role like this, and it's handled beautifully. And then there's a character who's only in one scene, who's played by a character that a lot of people might expect being in this movie, but you wouldn't know if it's in this movie or not. And also, Miley Cyrus was in here, everyone knows that, and she actually did pretty good for, like, her small appearance in this movie. Uh, now let's get to the performances. I thought everyone did a great job. I thought these three characters, these three actors worked extremely well together. I bought them. I actually bought, I thought that all three of them were, like, friends. I could see them as friends. I think Joe Scroll Levin did a great job. Seth Rogen was amazing here, and Anthony Mackie was really strong here as well. There was not one weak performance in this movie. Um, I really liked the writing... Uh, John Levine co-wrote this film with certain people, and I actually think he did a great job writing it, and his direction, too, was pretty strong. Not as strong as, like, 50-50, or Warm Bodies, which I actually forgot he directed. I actually really enjoyed that film. And, uh, yeah, overall, I have more positives to say about this movie. Now, if I had any negatives with the movie, I would say that the movie, um... I feel like there are certain jokes in this movie that don't really work. And also, I think that, um, I, I can't really think of a negative with this film, but I know that I did, I, but I know for a fact that it was not a perfect film. I mean, there was a scene in the church, which I kind of hate was in the trailer, but honestly, I, I literally almost had a heart attack watching that scene because I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. I just, I was laughing with like tears during that scene. Like I was crying when that scene ended. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck is going on with me right now? And honestly, stoner movies are generally really funny and Christmas movies, stoner Christmas movies, like the Harold and Kumar Christmas movie was just so enjoyable and this one was very enjoyable. I, but I thought this was a really, really good Christmas movie, and it's not as rewatchable as, like, Home Alone or Elf or um, Bad Santa, but it is a really enjoyable film that you could maybe watch with a few of your friends every Christmas, and, yeah, overall, I really liked the movie a lot, and I'm going to give it an A-. I should probably go see this, like, tomorrow or whenever. Because actually, I, I was, well, let's say, audience, I wanted to see this, but let's just say 
The people I was going with never got back to me. There you go. No, nah, that wasn't including me. No, because I thought because I thought Matt was going somewhere. It was somewhere with else. my cousin and your cousin, who is like the absolute biggest. Like, I don't want to be mean, but he never gets back to you, and when he does, it's always at the wrong time. Yeah, the only time like it's guaranteed is when he already got the tickets. <laughs> That's when it's guaranteed. Yeah, for row E. That's like a very low row. That's yeah. not exactly a good row. That's why I don't like the reserve C in fears. Sometimes I I like them, and sometimes I don't. Well, we're gonna. You want to talk about the Hunger Games now? Oh uh, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> the Hunger Games. <laughs> Magic Part Two. Yes. Now, since we never reviewed the Hunger Games film on this, uh, shall we talk about the trailers before? Should we talk about our backstory with the series? Like, I guess so. Yeah. But then we're just gonna lean into our expectations. Yes. When Hunger Games came out in 2012, I was in 8th grade, so I was mad. We didn't know each other then. Um, I read the first book before the movie came out. I actually really liked the book. I don't remember it actually, that much, but whatever. Uh, I thought the first one was fine. I don't think it was that terrible of a film, but I think it's kind of a little letdown. Then, in November 2013, we get Catching Fire, which is not only a great Hunger Games film, it's a great film. It was one of my favorite films of 2013. Like, I adore that film. I was so surprised by Catching Fire. I had no idea what to expect. I knew that maybe it would be better because of the director changes with with from Gary Ross to um Francis Lawrence. And man, oh man, the film no was dark. It was... Shut up! Oh my God! Jesus. Um, I just really love the way that film turned out. Then Mocky J Part 1 came out. I know a lot of people out there didn't really care for it. Andrew, I'm talking to you. Um, But I actually thought it was a fine film. I, I like the whole political, vibe, political thriller vibe to it. Yes. Was it slow? Was it slow? Yes, it was. But I was still interested in knowing what was going to happen. There was a lot of build-up. Did this movie have to be split? Did this book have to be split into two parts? Not at all. It did not. It's a very short book. A lot of people say it's the worst book in the series, considering it, saying that because it's the last one. But, like, it's kind of sad. But, um, now going into this movie, I was expecting this movie to be slightly better than part one. But I had no clue how it was going to turn out. I thought the marketing was fine, um, and I was kind of a little upset. I'm, I was like, oh, it's going to be a little sad that this franchise is over, because this actually has been a pretty overall decent franchise. You guys can check out my full review for this movie on my channel. I, um, overall, I liked Mock and J Part 2. I think it wasn't as strong of a finale as it could have been. It could have been a much stronger finale, but as a movie, it was fine. What did I like about it? Something that has always been consistent from the beginning of this franchise to the end was Jennifer Lawrence's character. She is she owns this role. She proved that when she did Catch a Fire. I mean, when she did Hunger Games, a lot of people really didn't know who she was. People kind of knew who she was. She was already an Oscar nominee for getting an Oscar nominee for this moment. She was in X-Men First Class where she played Mystique, but she wasn't as well-known. And this movie made her known to pretty much a lot of people our ages. And then she did Sunrise Playbook, which she won the Oscar for. So, the, I mean, she's an Oscar winner. She, and she's great. And, I mean, Joy comes out in a few weeks. Looking forward to that film. Not as much as, like, The Revenant or anything else, but I'm still looking forward to that film for her performance alone. Uh, I thought all the other performances were very strong. I thought I didn't... I don't believe that there's ever been really a weak performance in this entire franchise, personally. Yeah, there might be performances where they're like, eh, they're fine, but there's never really been, like, a god-awful performance in this franchise. I always thought that everyone did a great job. Josh Hutchinson has improved this, his acting over the franchise. When you want, when you compare his performance in this movie to the first home games, you're like, oh yeah, his, his acting has improved. It's amazing. Everyone else did a great job, too. I like the visuals of the movie. It's not as heavy visuals as like Lord of the Rings or um, Harry Potter or Star Wars, but the visuals in this movie are pretty good. I like the cinematography. I really like the score. I thought that I like some. I like the action sequences. I do, and those are really my positives. Negatives. I would say that the story does fall a little flat. I think the story is a little weak, but it's still like what's gonna happen. Like if you didn't read the book, you might not have an idea of what's gonna happen. 
But if you did, you obviously know what's going to happen, but you would like to be impacted when you watch the movie. You'd be like, oh, I feel like someone who hasn't read the books or done any research. Um, There were two death scenes in this movie that really got to me. Like, I had no idea. I kind of had an idea that one of them was coming, but the other one, the second one, I had no clue that one was going to... I didn't think that they would go that far. But because that's what happened in the book, it just blew my mind that they would do something like that. I'm not going to spoil anything for those who have, who don't know what happens, of course, but it's just insane. And the pace, and this is a very, very slow-paced film. I felt the pace for this movie. I mean, it wasn't as slow-paced as Mock J Part 1, but I felt the pace for this movie. I felt it. And I don't like to feel paces during the... I don't like to feel the runtime during the movie, but sometimes that happens. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it doesn't work. But yeah, I think that as a finale, it was very weak. As a film, it was fine. I thought this finale just could have been much stronger. I wish this finale was on the same level as Deathly House Part 2 or Return of the King, but sadly it wasn't. And if it was, I would have been happy with that. But because it wasn't, it kind of broke my heart. So overall, I'm going to give Maga J Part 2 a solid B. And uh, I'm sure everyone listening to this right now has already seen it. Depends on whenever this episode's uploaded. But as of this date, I'm sure everyone has already seen the film. And for those who are not, I'm sure they're seeing it over the Thanksgiving weekend. <clears throat> now let me talk about my experience with the franchise I saw the first movie oh, I saw all the movies in theaters like you I mean because Brian did you see the first movie? yes yeah okay in theaters uh, I own the first two on Blu-ray I don't own Mockingjay part one because I'm waiting for like after Mockingjay part two comes out on Blu-ray for like a two pack with both of them together because you know it's just simpler because you sh they should be watched back to back. Um, now, one I thought was it was fine. It wasn't great, but I still do enjoy it because the Hunger Games, like you know, the second half of that movie is really good, <laughs> except for like the action. But you know, aside though, like the survival shit's really good. Also, should we say that this series is really dark for PG thirteen? <laughs> God. Um, now, Catching Fire, it's a fucking great movie. No problems with that movie. Walking J Part 1, I thought that it was it was good. I just felt like it's, again, slow. And just nothing. It's really an, un, it's an uneventful film. Like, not a lot of stuff happens in it. It's more about po politics. So... Unless if you're here for the action, you're probably not gonna like it. But if you are in it for the for the you know dialogue, it's really good dialogue. And now we talk about part two. Expectations for this film. Uh, after I saw, after I saw part one, I'm like, yeah, I hope this is gonna be a really solid conclusion to this series because we've been with these characters since 2012. We've been up there for like three years with these characters, and learned them, and just seeing what all this shit they went through. And now, like, it's all going to come to, like, finality, closure. And I thought that, I do agree, though, that this is definitely not better than Deathly Hollows Part 2. This is still, though, a good, a good, it's a solid, good ending to the series. It could have been better, yeah. But is it, like, a smack in the face? No, it's not a smack in the face. It's a fine ending. It's solid. Now, what I like about it, acting's great. Jennifer Lawrence does a really good job. Peter, did, oh, Josh Hutcherson does a really good job. Liam, Liam Hemsworth does really good. Um, and there's really nothing to complain because again, just like the first film, all the acting is really. Oh good. fuck! I forgot there was one other major complaint. They, the supporting characters are barely in this movie, which pissed me off. They're only in like one scene, which kind of pissed me off. But it is what it is. So oh yeah, I just remembered them. Um, Joanna is like barely in it. I just remember that. Uh, yeah, that, that, I can understand that. Then again, you know how long this movie would have been. Um, Plus, positives. Hello, yeah. go to your positive. Continue the positives. Uh, but the, the other thing I like though about the film, I think it's well directed. I think the you know there's no shaky cam. But ever since like Francis Lawrence took over again, they're not related. But ever since Francis Lawrence took over, he's done a great job of filming the movies they look they look really good and they are nice and clean and yet very intense because there's 
I'll tell you, there, there's a, there's that there's this one action scene, and that really like at this point, this is when I was like, oh shit, I'm into it more now. <laughs> Uh, there's this one scene that's just so it, it starts off so intense, like some like out of the thriller slash horror movie, and then like it then turns into an all out action scene after. It is really good, and yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna say what it is the, the scene, but you'll see if you see the movie. Um, score is really good. Again, cinematography very good. I think the writing was pretty good for the most part. It's just that, again, like what Brian said, some characters are barely in it, so they needed more dialogue to them. Uh, now, should we talk about the relationship between the three leads? Nah, spoiler. Just no. Spoiler. No, Matt. Let's just say I think it's a fine ending to the relationship. It's fine. Uh, now, really, the only real negative, other than the, the you know, the BD and a couple of other people don't get like much screen time with Joanna or anything... Is why, that, why are you only talking about Joanna? Well, because there's like one or two scenes with her, and then that's it. I don't give a shit about Joanna. No one does. I mean, oh, Matt, shut up! You're just saying that because I just said that. <laughs> if you didn't care, you wouldn't bring her up. Well, really, there's a, that's the only two I could think of. What are you talking about? Because Phoenix actually in it for a good amount. Phoenix is an important part to it. I'm not talking about him as in supporting. Okay. That's not what I mean. Oh my. Good God. Well, I'm dumb, audience. <laughs> yeah, you idiot. But really, the only issue is I felt like, you know the beginning of the movie, the first like, maybe half an hour, that should have been resolved in the first part, I feel like. Because it still felt like the first part, that part. Um, I just wish that was resolved in it. Because, like, it really, it, it just felt slower. Uh, and, then, and then, like, when the city stuff happened, the capital stuff, when they first, you know, get into the capital, it started picking up. And then when that scene happened, it, it really, it picked up a lot more. Uh, but really, like, overall, I think that, again, this movie is, it's, it's a good movie. It's a fine conclusion. Ugh. It's not amazing. He's going to give the same grade as me. Now I'm going to give it a B plus. Give Mike now. Now let's go to Spotlight. Matt, please, ask questions. Away we go. And I'm going to quote Hook from Pan. And away we go. <laughs> Fuck yourself, Garrett Helen. Fuck yourself. Don't bring up the thing, Matt. Don't you bring it up. Don't do it. I'm not doing it. You better not. I was going to say do it. Actually, wait. No, no, no. Let's hold on to Spotlight Review. Let's just talk about the movies that are coming out. And women release. Carol, Kate Blanchett, Rooney Mara... 1950s, they love each other. They want to be a couple. Kate Blanchett's hot. Rooney Mara is adorable. I'm looking forward to this movie when it comes out and around here in my area because I love these kinds of movies. I love dramas. I love dialogue heavy films. I'm really looking forward to this movie. I know this isn't going to be Matt's cup of tea. Matt will probably watch it when it comes out on cable. It'll probably be nominated for Best Picture. So, like, when all the Best Picture movies are re released, he'll probably go see this. I bet for sure he's going to see this. I bet he, we're going to try to do the Best Picture thing like we did last year. Um, all you see is me in the seat. No. <laughs> what? All you see, no, look, all, like, during that movie, all you see is, like, because if you go, you, say if you go to see it with me, and all you see is just, like, I'll be the like, entire I'll movie. Be like, get, I'll be like, get <laughs> out of here. No one, the audience doesn't even know what I just did, but. No. God damn. This is why we should do some video once. <laughs> well, here comes all the text messages. Awkward silence. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. But, um... Um... But, yeah, I really want to see this movie immediately. Um, whenever I can. And, yeah, overall, I'm really looking forward to seeing this movie. Because I love these two actresses so much. And, um, yeah, overall, I'm really looking forward to this movie. So, yeah, that is it. Mm -hmm. Um, now we get to one last film release, and this is a film that I want to see as soon as I can, even though I've heard mixed things about it, and that's Legend with Tom Hardy, where he's playing the Kray Twins. 
It's from the guy who directed 42, and he's the guy who co-wrote the screenplay to LA Confidential, which is one of my favorite films ever. And um, I'm really looking forward to um, checking out this movie whenever. I heard mixed things, but everyone's praising Tom Hardy because he's playing two characters. I mean, the guy's going to get nominated for an Oscar this year for The Revenant. So I'm glad. This guy is honestly like one of the best actors we have working today. I mean, I love Tom Hardy. I love watching that guy pretty much. Everything I've watched him in, I've always liked him. I mean, Matt, there's a Mad Max poster right in front of me as we speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, I loved him as Bane. I loved him in The Drop. I loved him in Bronson. I loved him in Inception. I loved him in Warrior. Wallace. Locke. The guy is such a fantastic actor. And I think him playing two characters is awesome. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this movie. And there's like three moments in the trailer, three lines in the trailer that just make me want to, like... It just makes me, like, laugh so much. And I got them on my phone, so I'll, like, play them so that you people can, like, hear how awesome they are. Number two. And finally. That's actually what happens in the trailer after he says that line. Taron Egerton like cracks up like a Joker laugh, and that just literally hurt my chest. Like I mean, I have chest pains right now, but no, I actually am really looking forward to this movie. I really want to see it as soon as I can. I think it comes out wide release on the eleventh, so um, two week, three week wait, not too bad. I mean, like if this was a critically beloved film, yeah, I would be like, oh, I need it now, but I can wait a few weeks to see this movie. And if I don't see it, then whatever. But I'm sure I'll try to see it definitely. Before um, the year ends. What's interesting though about it too is that for people who don't know, he's not he's not just playing like two of the same characters. He's playing two different characters here. They're they're related, but they're just different. They have different like you know psych psychological stuff with them. And as you can tell from the trailer, what some of you play. <laughs> I really want to see this movie too, even though even though I know people are like, yeah, about it. A lot of you are like, it's a fine film. It's a little let down, but everyone's praising Tom Hardy. Excuse me. <laughs> Jesus, that sounded like you were trying to like when you burped that. What? <laughs> what know, did it, it sound just sounded like? deeper when you said Tom Hardy. Yeah, Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> so she's gonna start talking like Tom Hardy now. Oh crap. <laughs> um. No, I mean, I mean, I want to see it. I'm interested in it. I like gangster movies. Gangsters, what the guys? That is a quote from um, Superbad. I didn't know until you just said that. I didn't know Terry Engerton was in this. You didn't know that he was in no, it? No, I didn't notice. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Boom. Also, shout out Terry Engerton. You're doing good. You got a big year coming up after this, too. So, yeah. <laughs> so now, Spotlight. Matt didn't see. I saw it yesterday. I've been waiting for this movie for quite some time because I remember um, I wanted to look up what w Michael Keane was going to do after Birdman because when I saw Birdman, and I still stand by this, he did give, in my opinion, the best performance by a lead actor of last year. The best performance, I think, of last year was, was um, simply J.K. Simmons from Whiplash. I think that was the best performance, period, of last year. But, um... I heard about this movie called Spotlight. It was from Tom McCarthy, who I saw in, in person about a month ago at the EW Fest promoting this film. I got more excited for I was already excited for the film because I love the trailers. I remember hearing all the praise of it from like film festivals and stuff. And I just... Seeing him in person was just something so cool because he's actually a really strong director. I love the movie Win-Win with Paul Giamatti. But, um... With, um... He made a movie called The Cobbler of Adam Sandler, which is not a good film at all, but I can't really blame him for that. I don't think that film was entirely his fault. Or Adam Sandler's fault. I just don't think the film went as well as they wanted to. Um, Because every director has their missteps. Every director has their missteps. It's the truth. Spielberg has had one. Scorsese has had one. Christopher Nolan has yet to have one, even though I think Interstellar is a misstep. But, um... Yeah, every director has his missteps. So, yeah, I was really excited for this movie, and I love the cast. You got Michael Keane, like I said, Mark Ruffalo, Rage McAdams, Lee Shriver, Stanley Tucci, John Slatery, Brian Darcy James. This is a great cast. Great cast. And it takes place in Boston, one of the greatest cities ever. 
and I love movies with di lots of dialogue. And also, it's good. It's like a journalism type movie. It has an All the Presidents Men vibe, which is one amazing film. So yeah, go ahead, Matt. Ask your questions away. Away your questions go. <laughs> Do any priests get naked? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you sick bastard. You're yeah. sick. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was fucked up. Yes. Um, how yes. is how is the main cast? Let's start with everyone this. is amazing. Everyone has great performances. Now to come down to who is the main character. There is no main character. Oh, so Michael. Keaton Everyone has Keaton. their same screen time. You ask what? So the Michael Keaton could get nominated, possibly. They're all gonna if they get nominated, they're all supporting. <laughs> Cast the spotlight. The it's just like in the Oscar thing. It's just like the crew from Spotlight. <laughs> This movie's probably going to win Best Cast at the um, SAG Awards this year. Should. It, really it, it will definitely, without a doubt, win that award because it's deserving. All these actors are amazing. So, yeah, every actor did a great job. There's not really one performance that stands out necessarily, mm. but everyone thinks that the better, the best kind of performance in this movie is Mark Ruffalo, who's, at, who's great in the movie. He's excellent here. I mean, first of all, when you have Hulk and Batman together... And Birdman. It... <laughs> no. No, Matt. I wasn't going to include Birdman. I was including actual superheroes. Oh. You idiot. Ah. Uh, uh, ah, Um, Yeah, when you have those two together in Boston, that's kind of some positive for me. And, um, yeah, every actor did a great job. Michael Keane was great. Rachel Williams was good. She wasn't exactly amazing. But she did a very good job. Stanley Tucci was great. Lee Schreiber was only in the movie for a few minutes, and he did very good. He was very toned down in here. Uh, John Slayer was great, and so was Brian D.R.C. James. So everyone did a great job in this movie. Every performance was pretty much top-notch. So how was the story? Great. When you have a story like this, because it involves the, um, the Catholic Church scandals involving um, priests molesting kids, which just disgusts me, the whole thing just... It breaks my... And it sucks that stuff like this is still happening. It's still happening. And I know there are probably a lot of people out there, religious people. This isn't as like a religious type movie as like a God's Not Dead or anything. But I'm sure they're going to be like, oh no, that's not happening. There's no way that's happening. No, 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 no. I don't want to believe... Dead. I don't want to believe any of you that this is happening. But it happens. And it's terrible, honestly. It. This is like doubt, but from the newspaper point of view. Doubt is like spotlight from the Catholic Church's point of view. So like that's oh it's crazy but yet the story is fantastic as of right now this film is actually currently the front runner for best picture. It's currently the front runner for best picture to win that. And honestly and I gotta say this right now there are a few movies coming out within the next few weeks that are gonna be nominated for best picture like A Joy, Carol, The Revenant, The Hateful Eight, In the Heart of the Sea possibly. What? The likable eight. <laughs> the likable eight? Yes. Oh, okay. Because of all the actors, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, um... I could totally understand why this film will win Best Picture. Like, it's really a excellent film. It's really good. Any more questions? I want more questions. I want to continue talking about this! Okay, how is the direction? Great direction by Tom McCarthy. Excellent direction. He's going to get nominated for Best Director. Will he win? I have no idea yet. So, but, um, his direction was very strong. It was very fast. When you watch a journalism movie, you know it's going to be fast-paced, and it's going to be very tightly, like, realistic, because, like, journalists always want to get their stuff right. I don't take a journalism class. I probably will in college. I actually, this movie made me want to take a class you like that. You don't want to see O'Halloran's face in journalism. <laughs> yeah. We just spoiled, we just said the name of our teacher on the radio. That's not a good sign. Shout out! <laughs> Shout out the devil. Um, Shout out. um, but yeah, um... It made me want to take a journalism course. I'm probably going to do that in college. It's not going to be my major. It's not. But it's definitely going to be a class I'm going to try to take. Um, but yeah, like, the direction was very strong and tightly paced. It was really well directed. Mm -hmm. uh, how is the score? The score. There's not really a score really? to this movie. Not yeah. really. It's a really quiet movie. Pretty much. Okay. Well, it makes sense. It's a very serious matter. <laughs> Hey, there are serious movies with lots of score. Yeah. But I mean, for a realistic well, yeah, it's pretty serious. Matt, it's a movie about journalism. It's not really no. But I mean, by like something the, that would have a score. No, not just never mind. I'm not never mind. 
Never mind. Uh, is there any issues, all right? Because it sounds like there's no issues. I, I can't really think of any issues, but I can't see myself ever re-watching this film again. Uh, not like it's a bad thing, but like, I can maybe watch it like once a year, but not like over and over again. Like, there are a certain amount of dramas that I can watch over and over again. This is just not one of them. Because like, this, like the movie isn't disgusting. They don't show anything. They don't show anyone getting the, like raped or anything, oh, but like, or um, molested or anything. But um, just hearing about it, just it just makes me sick that there are people out there who are doing this because they just, they think, oh, we have nothing else better to do, so we gotta do this. Like, it just, it makes me sick. It just, it it hurts me that stuff like this is happening. And at the end of the movie, they're, like, saying how it's still going on, and, like, they list off a bunch of cities and stuff. And, dude, the cities are, like, four, like, pages long. I mean, dude, it's crazy. They listed, like, 30 cities on each page. That is, it's crazy, like... How this keeps going on. Actually, no. It's more than like... It's like 200 cities. Like, it's a lot of cities, dude. So, it's pretty crazy. But, yeah. I I adore this film. It gets a solid A. It's one of the best films of the entire year. Everyone should definitely go check this movie out whenever they can. If they can't find a fear playing it, I'm sure they can because it just expanded to wide release this week. So, more people should be able to find it. It's not like at every single fear, like a, um, like a Hunger Games. But, it's... Find it. Go to your like local art house theater. See this movie. Support it. It deserves all the support it gets. It's a great film. I loved it. Should we say AMC art house? Because it's not really anything about AMC. You said when I asked. You. I saw it at AMC. But I thought you said like there's not really other ones. It's at. No, it's not like a mainstream film like a Hunger Games where it's at every theater in the entire no, no, country. No, I don't want to ask you. Like you just said, like you know, I was like, well, it's like you know, in those smaller ones at Red Bank. You're like, I don't think so. You like more say AMC. They're playing at non AMCs. Really? Oh shit! That might go. So I have to see, like, because I don't think I think the closest one to here that has it would be Mammoth. Or yeah. That's where I saw it. Yeah. Well, actually, New Brunswick's playing it, but the thing is, Mammoth's closer though. No, mom, they didn't start. No, it's not. What? Well, they're both currently the same mileage, the same distance. But really, New Brunswick's easier to get to. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm down there, I'll probably go see it. I want to definitely see this movie. Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to think, like, is it harder to watch than Foxcatcher? No. Okay. Because so. Foxcatcher is a really slow-paced film. This movie's fast-paced. So this is like your new Schindler's List, kind of-ish. Never compare any movie to Schindler's List. Schindler's List stands Even on its own. You never compare anything. It's in that one, anything no, it's to in that, Schindler's List. It's in that one year time slot. Like Schindler's I, List, I can't. I cannot watch Schindler's List every year. I can watch that. I I usually like to watch that film like maybe every ten years. Damn, dude, that's a fucking deep fucking film. Do you not understand how personal that film is for me? Yeah, you wouldn't know because you're not that kind of person. No, and I have the movie currently on my shelf. So good for you. I don't care. Give me back the mic! So now we're gonna get to the box office. Ooh. Box office results. Here we go. Matt's gonna guess the box office results. I can't wait to see how he's gonna fuck up with this. I'm sure he already knows what number one no, is. I don't. But I wanted well, I to guess. What but is. I wanted to figure out how much money it made. Oh God. No. So that's gonna be fun. So Matt, start off with number five and end with number one. What is your number five? Uh, I would say number five. Is Bridge of Spies. Okay. Number four. I would say number four is. The, no, Goosebumps. Number four is Goosebumps. Number three is The Martian. Number two is The Night Before. And then number one's Hunger Games. I'm going to guess with. 70 million? Oh my god, you are absolutely terrible. Yeah, none of them. You are terrible. Yes, Hunger Games is number one. Yeah. Everybody That's number is... one. You, what, how much money did you guess it made? 70 million. It made 101 million. Shit. Which is, which is actually the lowest amount it made over the weekend. Oh, 100. It's gonna make the amount of money it's gonna make, okay? It's gonna be fine. Don't worry, Lionsgate. You'll have a lot of money. Don't worry. I was all No, because when you compare it to the last one, the um 
part one got more. The last one had, um... It was 115, I think, first? Um... I don't remember. I think it was 150. I don't remember! The first one had 152.5 opening weekend. The Catcher Fire had 158 million. Part 1 had 121, and this one had 101. Whatever. Okay. It's 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 still going to make a lot of money. Don't worry about it. Okay? So, yeah, you're right about that. Number 5, you said Bridge of Spies. Bridge of Spies is not even close to the top 5, you idiot. Mm -hmm. That it's it's it was seven last week, so now this week it's number ten. Number five is Secret in Their Eyes with six point six million dollars. That's Matt. It's a low budget film. There's really nothing else out this week except for Hunger Games. Really, number four, The Night Before with ten point one million. Number three and two. I cannot believe you forgot that these two films are out. You asshole. You thought number four is Goosebumps? You idiot. Goosebumps is number 11. You said number 3 is The Martian. The Martian's number 7. So that's close. Number 3 is The Peanuts movie. With 12.8 million. Did you really forget that this movie was out? Okay, you... I'm, I can't keep track of movies anymore. Oh, because you're playing stupid Call of Duty colon Black Ops 3. Hey, that came or as out. I call it, Black Pain 3. Dude. Pain Ops 3. When did I offend you? <laughs> call of Duty sucks. It sucks. Eh. How can you... Oh, oh, you're the one who, like, praised this movie to death. How can you forget that... Uh, did you really forget that it was out? Yes, I'm aware because of how The Martian's been, like, the top five for, like, seven okay, weeks. Okay, I don't shit. remember... I, I just... God, I Stop have, paying attention to the COD! I have, too much, I have terrible memory when I have to keep track of too much shit that comes out. This I'm able to do it so well! Number two! Spectre! 14.6 million! You Bond fanboy. You lied to everybody. You are not a fanboy. Near am I, of course. But I you're not. You're not okay, a fanboy. Okay, I forgot every fucking thing that came out last How week. can you forget that Spectre came out? Because I did. How? Okay. There's, you literally have a poster right here in my hand. I right didn't there. I look at it the entire show. How, but how can you forget? Never mind. Never make me do these top five things. Never. Oh, yes, I am. Because you know what? It's fun seeing you fuck everything up. It's fun, honestly. All right, so let's talk about the other movies in the box office. Number six was Love the Coopers with $3.9 million. Uh, Marsha was number seven with $3.7 million. Spotlight was number eight with $3.6 million. That's very good for a movie that just got into wide release. Um... 33 was number 9 with 2.2 .2 million. Bridge of Spies was number 10 with 1.9 million. Goosebumps 1.7. Brooklyn 1.1. I'm going to try to check that movie out. I honestly have no interest in that film, but because of the critical claim, I'm like, I'll check it out. Why not? I'll try to check it out. Um, yeah. So, so that's it, guys, for Nerdy Scores, Colin the Film Podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Next week is, um... Well, also, it's ne uh, next time we record, it'll be after Thanksgiving. So we all we all hope from us to you guys, we all hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Eat good food, watch football, watch the parade, get have a great fatter. time, and 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 um, be safe while you're shopping on Black Friday. Be safe. Be we you we hope you all are safe. I might attempt to go. I don't know what I'm gonna do. If I go, I'll probably go later on in the day, not early where everyone's going to go. I'll probably go like maybe like at 5 o'clock in the afternoon where it will probably still be busy, but not as busy. I wouldn't go to the mall. I'll go to like Best Buy, which I might die in there. But you know what? If I die in Best Buy, <laughs> fine went, with me. I went out like a legend. I died in Best Buy. <laughs> yeah. Like a legend. Um, but yeah, we all hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Also, should we say there's some goddamn good movies coming out? Yes, Creed, The Good Dinosaur, Victor Frankenstein, Room is... You know, everyone's saying that Room's going to expand soon. Room is probably expanding this week. I am probably going to see that movie this weekend. And Trumbo. Expanding. Yeah, soon. Trumbo too, but... Uh, There's five is... movies. Room is more important. Five. Matt's not even going to see The Good Dinosaur. You know why? Because Matt has no soul. I'm thinking about it. You go see it. No! If, if you don't see it, and I mean it, if you don't see it before we record, there's going to be a problem. You. We're probably recording on Saturday. Sunday, I'm very busy. Two things I have to do. Watch Rocky and watch that. Yeah. 
Thanks. Yes. Watch Rocky, you gargantuan buffoon. Or I'll send you a recap so you'll understand stuff, and then you can watch the Rocky films afterwards. Do not... If you see Creed on Tuesday night, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. You are not seeing Wednesday Creed before night, me. Convenient. Go see it on Wednesday night. Wednesday night's the... Wait, why, why would I see Creed on Tuesday night? What? Because it comes out on Wednesday. Wait, I thought... I thought Creed it, comes out on Wednesday. I thought it came out Thanksgiving. It just says Thanksgiving week. That's what they always oh, mean. Okay. Just because a movie comes out... On cr around Christmas doesn't mean it's coming out on Christmas. I actually thought it came out like on Thanksgiving. No, so like, they wouldn't release a movie on Thanksgiving. That's interesting. They wouldn't do that. That's interesting. <laughs> you idiot. You dumbass. You Boom. idiot. Ugh, idiot. <laughs> Guys are retarded. So that's it, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving week. Remember, eat a lot of food. And Watch football. And do not gain weight, like Matt. No, gain weight. Don't do it. Don't, <laughs> Don't do, it. do it. No, just do it. Do it. Do it. Don't let your food be haunted. Eat it wait, before what? it goes away. How can your food be haunted? Shut up. The ghost of Mr. Gerbil. Jesus. That is it, guys. Thank you. Goodbye. Happy Thanksgiving. Peace out. Ah!